Implementing drag and drop is a great way to improve an application's interactivity. However, it might seem like something that's extremely difficult to implement, but it turns out in WPF, it's really not too bad. So in this short series, we're going to cover a bunch of different drag and drop scenarios and show off how to implement those in a WPF application so that you can make your own application better and more interactive. So just to get started with drag and drop, I have a very simple demo set up. So all I have is this canvas and inside the canvas, we have a little red rectangle. Let's see this in the demo. So here's my canvas with the border and there is my rectangle. So the first step with drag and drop is we have to identify what we want to drag and drop. And in that case, it's going to be this red rectangle. I want to drag this to somewhere else on the canvas. And this is a very simple demo that we have here just to get an idea of how drag and drop works and introduce some of the various different APIs and functions that we have to be calling. So we want to move this rectangle. So we're going to start off by starting the drag and drop. And we're going to do that whenever the mouse moves on this rectangle. So mouse move, pretty common event that you want to hook into for starting drag and drops. Let's go ahead into this event handler. So we have rectangle mouse move. Maybe I should actually give this rectangle a name. Let's call it red rectangle. There we go. And we'll rename this handler red rectangle mouse move. So obviously this is going to get fired when our mouse moves on the rectangle. But we don't want to start a drag and drop unless we're actually clicking the rectangle when the mouse moves. So that's the first thing we're going to make sure we can take these mouse event args and check if the left button has a state of mouse button state pressed. So only if the mouse button is pressed. And now all we're going to do is start the drag and drop. So to do that, very simple. We can just take the drag drop class and it has a method on this class, a static method to do drag drop. So the do drag drop method takes a drag source. So the drag source in our case is going to be our red rectangle. We have a field for that since we gave our red rectangle a name. We can pass in some data. So we can just pass in a plain old data object, just instantiate that, nothing else there. And some drag drop effects. We'll just do this as a move because that is my ultimate goal. I want to move this red rectangle. So we're starting the drag and drop. Everything is just going to work, right? Let's see this. So if I do a mouse move on the red rectangle, nothing happens because the left button has to be clicked. So I'm going to click and then move. And oh, look at that. So our cursor did change because we have now entered a drag and drop. So there we go. The only issue is we get this little cross that says the drop is not allowed. And we want our drops to be allowed. Our goal is to drop somewhere on this canvas, which means the canvas is our target. And we have to allow drops on this canvas by setting allow drop to true. So we can try this again. We have allow drop as true on our canvas. And OK, we still can't drop. Why is this? Well, that is because this data object is empty. We have to actually provide data. Otherwise, it's not going to allow us to drop anywhere because why should it? There's no data associated with the drag and drop. So we do have to pass something in here. And actually, we don't have to pass in a data object. We can just pass in anything and it'll automatically be wrapped into a data object as long as it is serializable. So in fact, let's just pass in the red rectangle because that could be useful whenever we receive this drag and drop eventually. We'll get into that in a little bit. Let's get this drag and drop going. Let's try this again. So drag and all right, there we go. So we can drop this. Let's get a drop handler in here and we're going to have that drop handler on the canvas. So I'd say this is the next part. So once you find what you want to move and you get the drag and drop started, you got to figure out where you want to drop this. So we want to drop our rectangle somewhere on the canvas. So we're going to have a drop handler because the canvas is the target. We'll just name this canvas drop. Let's put a breakpoint in here first and see this. So start the drag and drop and drop. There we go. We hit this handler and now we can just do our drop inside of here. So what do we want to do on this drop? Well, I want to put the red rectangle where I dropped. So where did I drop? Well, we can get that from these drag event args. We got a get position method exactly what we want and we want to get the position relative to the canvas so i'm gonna to have to give my canvas a name let's actually name that so we'll call this just canvas i feel like i shouldn't be giving these uppercase names i never know what to do when i'm naming things in xaml but actually yeah let's go for lowercase i feel like that's more appropriate because these are technically fields in our class so let's go with that 
red rectangle and red rectangle and lowercase canvas. And let's put this position in a variable that is a point and we'll call it the drop position. And now as you can imagine, this drop position point has an X and Y. So we're gonna use that X and Y to position our red rectangles. Let's take that red rectangle and set its X and Y. So the X and Y that we set are not actually X's and Y's, they are canvas.left and canvas.top. So if we use this, you might think maybe there's like a left property that we can set. That is not the case. Instead, what we have to actually do is use the canvas class. And there is some static methods on here to set the left and top attached properties, which are these right here. So it's going to set these values. And to use that method, so set left, we pass in the UI element. So what do we want to set these attached properties on? That is our red rectangle. And the left is going to be the drop position dot x and then we want to set the top and that is going to be the drop position dot y so this is exciting let's see this in action so we're going to drag this rectangle and plop it down there we go we got the drag and drop and we are moving the red rectangle that is so exciting so magical but maybe we want the rectangle's location to immediately update when we're just dragging around like this so if we're like over here and we haven't dropped yet the red rectangle would be right underneath our mouse so to do that we can instead hook into the drag over event. So let's have an event handler for that. And that is canvas drag over. And we can actually do the same exact thing that we have in the canvas drop method. So I'm actually just going to cut this out because instead of doing it on drop, we're going to do it whenever we drag anywhere new on the canvas. And now our red rectangle should update immediately. Let's see this. And oh, look at that. It just follows the mouse, that is so magical. All right, so this was all pretty easy because we're just inside the single main window. So we have access to our red rectangle. We can set it however we want. Pretty easy within just this single window control. But now the tables have turned. So now I have two separate controls here. So this is a user control over here. And this is another user control. And I have that in my XAML. So I have canvas one, which is the red border and canvas two, which is the blue border. So my goal is to move the red rectangle over to the blue canvas and the blue rectangle over to the red canvas. Or maybe I'm both in the same canvas. Ultimately, I just wanna be able to move these rectangles however I please between these two canvases. So first we gotta start the drag drop and we're gonna place that on our rectangle because that is what we wanna move. So the mouse move event, we're gonna hook into again. And if the left button is pressed, then we will do the drag drop. The source being the blue rectangle. Our data is gonna be the blue rectangle. And we're simply just gonna be moving this blue rectangle. So same thing as before, just reinforcing this concept. Oh, and this is big. I forgot to mention this earlier, but if we try this, my drop is not allowed, even though I have allow drop as true on my canvas. And that is because the background has to be set on this canvas to we can just do transparent in this case because we don't really want a background, but we do have to set this background if we want the drag drop to be picked up. So now if we do this, there we go. The drag drop is allowed. So I forgot to mention that earlier, but that is an important thing to keep in mind to make sure you got that background. Anyways, we started the drag and drop for this blue rectangle. Now we want to receive the blue rectangle in the first canvas. So that is canvas one, the red canvas. So we are going to have a drop handler on the red canvas. So something was dropped on the canvas, but what was it? We got to find out. So to do that, we're going to want to have to get the data that we passed into this do drag drop. And that's pretty easy to do. We can use our drag event args and use the data and get the data. And we have to pass in a format. Now I mentioned earlier that if we don't wrap the data that we pass in in a data object, then the default format is going to be serializable. So it's going to serialize this rectangle that we pass in. So the format here, we're going to use data formats and serializable. And this data gets plopped into an object. So we'll just call that data. So we got to figure out what this data is because right now it's just an object. So we know the data is going to be a rectangle, but we're going to generalize this. So you could have any kind of UI element. So we're going to check if it is a UI element which rectangle derives from. So by doing this, it could be a text block. We're allowing basically any WPF element. We'll put that into a variable element. And if that is indeed a UI element, then we're gonna add that element to our canvas. So we can call add on the canvas's children and just pass in the UI element. 
And before we do that, let's get the position of where we want the element to go. So we can do our point stuff again. So we're going to get drop position from the drag event args, get position relative to the canvas, and then we'll set canvas dot left on the UI element to be whatever our drop position X is, and then set the top to be the drop position Y. So I take the blue rectangle and move it on over here and that does not actually work. And that is because I did not set a background on my red canvas. So we gotta have a background of transparent, otherwise it doesn't pick up where we need the drop. So that's kind of like a WPF quirk, good thing I'm covering that. So let's try this again. There we go, so we can drop and we will drop and nothing quite happens. Let's put a break point here and see what's going on. So we do this again. All right, so we do drop and what is our data? Our data is null. That's not what we want. So quite frankly, for the do drag drop, I usually wrap this in a data object manually. So we're gonna continue doing that because that has never let me down. And our data format is gonna be serializable and we are gonna pass in the blue rectangle. And now we can keep this as data formats.serializable because that was the format that we set and this should work. So we drop that. There we go, we got our rectangle. Let's continue. So we set the position and then we add it to our canvas. Except the issue we have now is that this element is already on the other canvas on our other user control. So we have to remove it from there first before we can put it on another canvas, which makes sense because it's kind of a conflict right there. So one way that we can do that is whenever we leave this canvas, so we can do a drag leave, create an event handler for that. Then we can first get the data from the drag event org. So we're just gonna copy that over real quick. Let's just paste that in there, nice and quick. And then we can simply remove that element from the canvas children. So just remove the UI element, which is the drag drop data. And now let's try this. So let's drag the rectangle over, Oh, what happened to my blue rectangle? So this is the drag and drop quirk that I've run into pretty often. We're going to cover this in a second, but we can move over to the red canvas and paste that down. And there we go. We get our blue rectangle moved over to the red canvas. So the reason that this blue rectangle disappears is because the drag leave event actually propagates from the blue rectangle up to the canvas. Here we go. Our mouse is about to go over and that fires the drag leave event. And that event bubbles up to our canvas and removes the element from the canvas. So the quickest way to solve that is when this drag leave event handler gets fired, we can make sure that the event was originally fired from the canvas and not one of those inner rectangles. So we want to make sure that the original source is our canvas and not some sub item of the canvas. So now we leave the blue rectangle. All right, there we go. So we didn't hit that event handler. And now we head over to the red canvas, leaving the blue canvas. So the event handler did get fired and then we can simply drop this on here and there's our blue rectangle. And I'm actually gonna copy and paste all this to my other canvas. Ideally, we would just have a single canvas user control and they would share the same logic and we would just have two instances of that single canvas on our main window. But to make this demo a little bit more clear, I decided to have two user controls. So we are gonna have duplication, but that is okay. We can fix that if we need to. So let's update all of this for the red rectangle and attach our mouse move to the red rectangle and attach the drag leave to the canvas. And now if we try this out, so we can move blue over to the red and we can move red over to the blue. Not quite because we have to copy over the canvas drop on the red canvas over to the blue canvas. Let's do that real quick and attach that event. So on drop, we will do canvas drop handler. And now try that again. There we go, very nice. So this almost works, except if we move the rectangle and we stay on the same canvas and drop, then we get an exception because we're adding the element when it's already on the canvas we're trying to add to. So we have to do a little check here. So make sure the canvas children doesn't already contain the element that we wanna add. Just put that in an if statement and do the same thing on the other canvas. That's why I hate duplication and we shouldn't do this in real applications, but there we go, very nice. So the last thing I wanna do is show how to make this rectangle follow our mouse as we move the mouse around. So kind of like the same live updating that we had before. So we're gonna start off with drag over as we had previously, and same thing we did before, we're gonna move all of our drop logic into drag over. So here we go, and all right, this kind of works, except the element is getting removed. So I think what is happening is drag leave is still getting fired, and let's try this again, see if we hit that breakpoint. Yes, yeah, so drag leave is getting fired, 
even though we are still within the canvas. And that's because we enter the red rectangle because the red rectangle does go underneath our mouse. So since we enter the red rectangle, we leave the canvas and dang it, I didn't think we would run into this, but we did. So we're not gonna do original source here. And the easiest way to just fix all of this is whenever the drag starts, we can remove hit testing on the rectangle. So we can set is hit test visible to false. And we have to do that when the drag starts because otherwise, if we always have this, then if we try to drag the rectangle, it's not gonna work because it has to be hit testable in order to start the drag and drop. So we're not gonna set it to false until we start the drag and drop. So we could just take the red rectangle and set is hit test visible to false right here. But what if we have a bunch of stuff within our canvas? We wouldn't wanna iterate over everything and disable hit testing. So instead, we can have a dependency property for is child hit test visible, and that's a Boolean. The inner class is canvas one in this case, and by default, it's gonna be true, so we can hit test them. And then we can just bind to that value on the user control. So is hit test visible, we can bind to an element on our user control. So we're gonna name this user control to just root and reference that. And the path that we're binding to is, is child hit test visible. So now that's much easier than having to manually set it on every single canvas child. And let's do the same thing on the other canvas, of course. So set the binding, give our user control a name, add the dependency property, and update this to canvas two. So now when the drag and drop starts, we'll set is child hit test visible to false. And then when we're done the drag and drop, we'll set it to true. And same thing on the other canvas as well. And yay, there we go, and then we're flashing. So we can move around all we want. So now let's move this red rectangle over to the other canvas and get it to update as we move around over here. So first we have to actually implement drag over on our blue canvas, we haven't done that yet. So create an event handler for that and move all the drop logic into there. So same thing we did on the other canvas. I feel terrible about the duplication, but let's see this. And this might be everything we need to do. So let's take the red one and move it on over. All right, that's a good start. Now we'll take the blue rectangle and move it on over to the red canvas. And awesome, that is exactly what we want so i'm pretty excited about that all right so i think that's everything i want to cover for just an introduction to drag and drop so we learned how to start a drag and drop and then we went over some other drag and drop event handlers such as leaving an element when dragging and dropping dropping an element for a drag and drop and then dragging over something and we specifically use these to move the position of some kind of elements on a canvas. And real quick, before we wrap up, I'm deleting this other canvas. I'm so ashamed of all that duplication. So now we just have canvas one and we'll use canvas one on our main window. So there we go, same functionality, everything still works. Maybe I want one to be blue still. So that's no big deal. We can do that with a dependency property. So we'll just call this the color property. It's gonna be a brush for the canvas one user control and the default will be black. And that will simply bind to that dependency property, which is on the root control and is named color and do the same binding on our rectangle, which is still called red rectangle. I'm just gonna leave that for now. And now this canvas can have a color of red and this other canvas can have a color of blue. So there we go, just a little bonus content right there, getting some customization. There we go, so we got rid of that duplication. I should have done that from the start, but no worries, we got it cleaned up. Never too late to refactor. Anyways, that is the introduction to drag and drop. Gonna continue more on this. I wanna cover some other scenarios like integrating this with an MVVM application and maybe getting into something like a list view drag and drop as well. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoy the video and enjoy the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.